From Arda to Xanth, our favorite authors have developed robust, tangible worlds of fantasy for us to fall into. As a writer, even if you don't write fiction, you will have to build believable circumstances and social rules from which your characters must act. That sort of creative exploit takes a particular set of skills. Welcome to CC Writes. My name is CC Lepke. Today, I want to talk about world building. In any type of fiction, world building is a necessary skill to some degree. Even if you're writing about the small town you grew up in or a city you're intimately familiar with, you still have to set up the reality of that particular world with your audience. Not everyone is from your small town, so they don't know that Scary Mary sits in the same restaurant every night and kicks her husband or wraps his knuckles with a bundle of silverware. They don't know Dan the mailman who walks through the neighborhood and takes the time to knock on people's doors to hand deliver the mail. As the writer, you have to establish what the town looks like, who lives there, and how and why they relate to one another the way they do. That is world building. But world building isn't a simple matter of describing everything about a place. You have to know how much of a place to include, what's important and what can be forgotten what explanation needs made, and what can be assumed. You have to balance showing and not showing the world with a keen eye on what is most relevant. It isn't easy if you're just starting out, and many new authors fall into the cardinal writing sin of exposition. World building doesn't have to be difficult if you know where to start. With a solid understanding of three major aspects of world building, you can develop your own beautiful new worlds that your readers love and that you love to write. To build a world, you need to understand the key aspects of the ecosystem within which the people in your story live. The ecosystem includes elements such as weather, terrain, natural resources, animals, bugs, and how society addresses those things. Weather can change the activities that people are able to do during certain parts of the year. The terrain can change how a people group trades with one another, or how long it takes to get from place to place. Animals in a region can be dangerous, or they can be pests. All of these things change the way a person lives and acts. The ecosystem can even have an impact on the way a culture or society develops over time. People are affected in a significant way by their environment. We fear it, we live with it, or we conquer it. The outcome of the choices we make and how we interact with our environment is what shapes the basis of our society. Graveyards in other places look weird to me. During the Ice Age, glaciers scraped across Indiana and flattened it, but exposed some of our natural bedrock. We became a massive producer of limestone. In Indiana, our graveyards are filled with obelisks, mausoleums, statues, and other large grave markers because limestone in Indiana is really cheap. It's more expensive in other places, so their graveyards are more demure and oddly flat in comparison. My worldview is affected by a natural resource. Relationships are an important component of the world. Think about your own life and how your relationships affect your worldview. Your family, friends, acquaintances, relationship with the government, people with power and people without power. How you interact with each of those people and how they interact with you is part of your world. The way you interact is shaped by society, religion, and your own perception of how the world ought to be. When you're creating your world, think about how your society treats people who lack power compared to those who have power. In the United States, we believe in self-determination. People who lack power are treated as if they are failures who leech off of the system. They have worse health care outcomes, shorter lives, and are often called trash by people who are more fortunate. The thought is that they brought their life of poverty on themselves by not working hard enough. There are plenty of Americans who don't think that way and strive to make life better for those without power but it is a golden few. It's the same for many cultures. 
there are always outliers, and you shouldn't forget to include those people too. My hometown is very conservative. There's a strong belief in the traditional family structure with a wife who stays at home to take care of the children and men who go to work to provide for the family. The result is that many women are discouraged from seeking high-paying positions even within the government. We have fiery women and traditional men clashing while the government perpetuates an antiquated system that keeps their population in poverty. Relationships have power in the world that you create. The culture of your world is set by the government, social norms, art, architecture, finance, fashion, and religion. For many places, culture gives people a sense of identity even among a diverse backdrop. Culture shows how a population sees itself and how it sees the world at large. When building your world, consider how the people in it build their homes. Consider who it is they place on their money and why. What are they afraid of as a group? What kind of curse words and phrases do they use? What brings them together? What divides them? Think of the kind of artwork they place on the walls, the things that they've banned, and the things that they hide. Culture is in the kinds of clothes they're allowed to wear and things they think are normal and abnormal. To build a world, you have to build people and their beliefs as a community. Nothing defines the culture of my hometown quite as much as the Red Gold Factory. It's strange, I know, but the Red Gold Factory employs most of the people in the area. Starting in late summer, packing season begins. The tomatoes are harvested and canned at the factory, and it makes the whole town smell like tomatoes for months on end. In late fall, we often hold a chili cook-off where the residents get together and make the best chili, and the whole town comes and votes on which person did it best. When I think of my hometown, I think of the smell of tomatoes, the taste of bland chili, and the brick-and-mortar people who come together and celebrate after a long season of hard work. Environment, relationships, and culture make a world solid and grounded. If you nail these aspects of world building, then you'll have created a place where your readers can lose themselves. The easiest place to start is by examining the culture of the place where you live. Look around and figure out what makes your home a community. You might think your home is mundane and ordinary. Maybe it is, but an outsider might see it in a completely different light. Look around your home as if you're a stranger. Ask questions about why certain customs came to exist. When you can see your own hometown as an alien world, you'll start to notice all the little things about it that have to be explained. Those things that need explained to a stranger in your town would need to be explained to a reader as well. As a final thought, you should remember that not all things about your world should be explained in heavy detail to a reader. There is something to be said for brevity. Just because the place has a history doesn't necessarily mean you need to write four chapters on it so that your reader can come into the game with the same amount of information that you have. Instead, try to reveal the culture through the way your main character interacts with the world. Basically, if it's important, then you should include it. Otherwise, you're wasting everyone's time on exposition, which runs the risk of falling flat. You know every movie that starts off with a three-minute voiceover explaining the history that led up to where the characters are right now? I usually skip that part of the movie. I'm probably not the only one. Thank you for watching CC Writes. If you enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to like and subscribe, and also hit the bell so you can get notified when new videos come out. If you have any specific writing topics you'd like me to cover, go ahead and leave a comment below, and I'll go over as many subjects as I can. And if you want more content from me, then you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at CCLeptyWrites. My books are also available through Amazon.com. You can find them easily just by searching CC Lepke. Thanks again for watching, and have a good week!